Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at the brand new Adobe Capture CC app for iOS and Android. That's right, it's a mobile app. It's free to download from the App Store, free to download from Google Play. And let me explain a little bit about what it does. It allows you to capture four things, at least as of the recording of this video. Who knows what it might add in the future. But right now it allows you to capture your colors, your shapes, your brushes, and looks. Now that may sound familiar because Adobe actually had, prior to Capture, a separate app for each one of those. There was Adobe Color, Adobe Shape, Adobe Brush, and Adobe Hue for capturing looks, Adobe Hue. So now instead of having to have four separate apps on your applications that only did one thing, Combine them all into one application that we can build upon going forward to capture all kinds of things for design, video, web, photography, whatever it is you do. So with that said, let's take a look at how the app works. I've got it loaded here on my uh, iPhone 6S Plus, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to my Adobe folder. And in my Adobe folder, I've got lots of good Adobe apps there. Um, the first, or fir first icon, second row is Adobe Capture. Let's go ahead and launch it. And the first thing you'll notice is it brings up, after you sign in, your uh, last used library. Or it will be blank if you haven't created a library yet. Or it might be on my library as a default library. But in this case, it's on my Adobe Demos library where I've got a bunch of colors, a bunch of shapes, a bunch of looks already, a bunch of brushes. Let's pretend you're starting from scratch. You don't have any of that. So let's go in, tap the library, and create a brand new one. Let's call this one... Uh, Fall, fall, we'll just call, actually we'll call it Fall 2015, since that's what we're doing. Fall 2015, brand new library, I can go ahead and choose that new library, and now it's empty, it's kind of where you would be uh, if you're just starting with the app. So the first thing, we're on colors, so let's go ahead and choose a, or, or grab a new color theme. So the way it works, you can always use any of these tabs uh, to capture color, shapes, brushes, looks based on your camera, what your camera sees at any given time, or an existing photo. So in this case, I have a nice fall color uh, table set up here over to my right, and I'm just gonna go ahead and launch the camera so you can see it. And once I launch the camera, there it is. So as I pan around that scene, it's kind of like, okay, does he want this? Does he want that? It doesn't know. So as soon as I tap the screen, that freezes everything, and I can then move the color selection around to get exactly what I want. Or I could let it pick, but I'm kind of fussy that way, where I know what I might want in these fall colors. So there it is. You can, If you don't like a particular color, just move it around to one that you do like until you find one that you do like. All right, there we are. So I got a little bit of the green of the brush, some of the uh, skeleton, some of the leaves, some of the uh, fake uh, uh, vegetables here, and let's go ahead and snap it. Now at that point, it snapped it, and it's waiting for me to go ahead and name it and save it. So I'm just going to name it. Um, we'll name this one Fall Colors. Fall Colors. Um, and we'll just call it Fall Colors. We don't need a year on it. Now, if I make it discoverable, what I'm saying is, I like these colors so much, I want you to be able to use them so I can publish them on color.adobe.com for anyone to search for fall colors and they will be able to find my theme and actually use it. Uh, they're not that spectacular, so I'm just going to go ahead and say save the theme. And now that's one more theme or one theme in my library. I can have as many themes as I want. And thanks to the power of Creative Sync, it's now syncing or has already done. It's synced that theme and the new library up to Creative Cloud and down to all my existing Creative Cloud uh, running computers. So it's on my other computer already. It's on this desktop already. It's in my other mobile apps. It's on my iPad. It's in the other apps in this phone. Everywhere I have Creative Cloud, I've got access to that color theme and any new color themes I create. All right, so let's go to Adobe Shape. Now, Shape is very cool. And, uh, and I called it Adobe Shape. We're going to go to the Shape tab in Capture CC. And what this allows me to do is turn any object that my camera sees or from a photo into a vector shape. 
So I'm going to restage this a little bit. Let's go ahead and turn the camera on. And with the camera on, we're going to get some of this out of the way. We don't need the brush right now. We want the pumpkin. Kind of don't need the skeleton anymore. Let's move that away. And now that way we can kind of isolate to just the shape we want. And I can, I can try and get more of that with the slider. But what I found as a good tip is just simply turning on the device's light or flash. So I just tapped it from off to on. So now that's a continuous light, kind of illuminating and getting rid of that uh, shadow that I had. Let's get that angle maybe right about there. And then I'll go ahead and snap. And once I snap, it gives me a preview of what I just did. And it's right now in an editing mode. So it's saying, did you get any um, ex extraneous marks that you don't want? If so, you can use your finger and kind of just paint them right out so even though they're still in the photo they will not be part of the conversion so i can paint out any excess stuff oops i got went too far there let's go back to keep yeah we want to keep the shape <laughs> want to keep that stuff and because sometimes you you paint on something that's connected and then it says oh you want to eliminate all of this and no i don't want to eliminate all of it just that one little piece so i can go in add in the pieces i want or um, subtract or, or remove from shape and take out the pieces that I don't want. Again, with my finger, and I can pinch and zoom and just do a better job by zooming in and removing things I don't want. Went too far there. Let's go back to keep. And keeping the things that I do want. All right, so there we have it. That's going to be our new shape. And now when I tap next, it will actually do the vector conversion. No sense doing the vector conversion if you haven't cleaned it up yet because it's wasting, you know, wasting time converting things that might not be there. All right, so now that's a vector shape that we're going to use Creative Sync to sync to our library. And we're just going to go ahead and call that pumpkin. Yep, pumpkin. There we go, <laughs> pumpkin. And uh, again, we can put it in any library we want, but we'll save it to the same one. We'll save the shape. And again, using Creative Sync, that vector shape will now be available to me in apps like Photoshop and Illustrator on my desktop. All right, let's go to Brush. Now, Brush allows you to take any object and convert it into a real brush in your application of choice. So I'm going to go ahead and tap Create a Brush. And this time, we're going to go back over to the staging table here. And we're going to move the pumpkin out of the way. We're done with that. We actually want to make a brush out of a brush. I know that's kind of like, really? Yeah, we're going to make a brush out of this brush. And we'll kind of isolate it here. And we'll just tap the dot. That's the color we want to kind of get rid of. We can use the slider to get rid of more of it. But as long as the brush is isolated, we're good. So we'll snap the photo. All right. And now we come back and work on it. Okay, so I have uh, the photo snapped here. We'll wait for the air display to catch up. There it is. And now using my finger on the cropping, we can go ahead and crop down to just the brush for our brush by eliminating all that excess we don't need. Okay, next. We tap next. And then it even lets us pick what kind of brush we want. So I can pick a brush for Adobe Photoshop Sketch, which is an iPad app. If I want to be able to sketch with my brush in that app, there it is. I can also use um, Photoshop or make a brush for Photoshop, I should say. So if I want to use this brush in my desktop version of Photoshop CC, I can make a brush. Or I can make it an Illustrator brush to use in Illustrator. And of course, different, different types of brushes that will stretch it out or just plot it down one at a time. Well, actually my favorite for this one is the scatter look in Photoshop CC. So that's gonna take that brush, you can see lots of little versions of it and just scatter them around. So I love that. So let's go ahead and choose next. And it even lets me play with it and kind of paint with it to see what I would get uh, if I were to use that brush. So there it is. There's my uh, my new brush for Photoshop. And we'll go ahead and save it. And we'll call it 
scatter, scatter, brush, brush, <laughs> because it's a scatter brush of a brush. All right, so now we have that. You can name it whatever you want. Put it in whatever library you want. Let's go ahead and save it. And now that's been saved uh, as one of the brushes in that library. I can add as many more as I want. I can add Photoshop brushes, Photoshop sketch brushes, brushes, or Illustrator brushes. Last but not least, this time we're not going to use the camera. We're going to use, uh, we're going to do looks, but this time we're going to do it from a photo. Now I could do it from the camera. I can grab any scene around me and say that's the look that I want to create. Let me explain a little bit about what looks are for. Like I said, they're for video earlier on, but you really, if you're not into video or into video production, you really may not be paying attention to how much looks are used these days in cinematography, um, movies that we go to watch, TV shows, so forth and so on. So for example, I'm a, a Game of Thrones fan, I'm a Walking Dead fan, and especially in Game of Thrones, you'll notice any time they're in the castles or outside, depending on the time of day, they'll have this kind of grayish, old, medieval kind of look to the scene. And it, there's just no other way to describe it. They made it look like it was in those times that Game of Thrones would have been happening in. And that's because they changed the color of the video that they're shooting. They changed the color to give it a look for, so that it brings the person in. So it might be an oversaturated um, orange kind of look for a very sunny, moody, sunshiny morning. Or just, again, changing the look to change the emotion of that video. So in this case, I'm going to hit the plus sign. Instead of using the camera, I'm going to go in and tap the uh, button on the bottom right hand corner that allows me to go in and find a photo. So I can get a photo from my camera roll, I can get one from Creative Cloud, or I can get one from the market. I'm gonna get one from Creative Cloud. And in Creative Cloud, I can get one from my files folder, but more importantly, I can also get one from my Lightroom libraries. So I'll scroll up the library here and I've got my fall or my, not fall, but my landscapes portfolio. And inside my landscapes portfolio, I've got, as you guessed, a nice fall scene that I took in Traverse City, Michigan a few years back. So let's go ahead and open that up. And soon, as soon as I open it, just like uh, the color tab, kind of start picking colors out of that uh, scene on the table, this is picking uh, a look or multiple looks out of this photo um, that I opened up. So I like it. I'm going to go ahead and it's even giving me that cool DNA kind of look, kind of that 3D. All right. So let's go back a little bit. Let's start with the beginning. This is where you would normally end up. You would end up once you say, okay, you would end up back at the sample photo. And once you're on the sample photo, you can then go in and apply any one of those dots to that sample photo to change the look of it. So for example, I, if I want it to be more of a red look, I can put that red look to it and I can control the intensity with the slider. So I can pull it down a little bit or pull it up a little bit to control how that will look um, for the video. Now again, that's a still photo, it's a sample photo, that's great that it lets me do that, but really looks are mainly for doing uh, video production. So I really kind of want to see what it looks like on video. Now you notice there are three dots and I kind of quickly swipe between them earlier on. Um, that second dot, if we swipe back to it, is actually a video. So it's kind of a time lapse video where it just keeps looping back, you know, looping around and showing us what that would look like with that red look. And of course we can choose whatever color we want and choose the intensity and it shows us what it looks like on that again sample video so sample photo sample video but that really doesn't show you what it's going to look like on your content unless you tell it to so for example if you're shooting a project and you've got a sample clip from that project or you shot a movie already and you've got a sample clip from the movie um, you can actually bring that in to uh, capture CC into the hue or into the looks panel 
and that will actually allow you to sample any look on your existing video. So for example, if I uh, tap the dots or the menu at the bottom right hand corner, I can bring up the menu and it says preview image. I can delete a preview if I don't want it, but more importantly, I can add a preview image or video. So by adding the ability to, or having the ability to add a preview image or video, that means I can uh, go grab something out of my camera roll or um, uh, from my various sources, bring that video in, it will compress it. And usually I recommend something short because again, you're only using it just as a quick sample. And then that will let you apply the look to your video to see what it looks like or your image. So I'm gonna uh, tap out of this and then we're just gonna swipe over one more time and now we see the, uh, or we will see the horse and buggy walking by. And uh, again, that's that orange look on it. So I can choose the red look to see what that looks like. And if I, if I, don't want, if I want to see it over the whole thing, all I have to do is just wait and it will loop back around. And again, I can control the intensity, make it superly, super overly saturated with red or lower the intensity and get it to look the way I want. But for this video, I'm trying to create that old time horse and buggy look and, look and feel. So maybe I want to desaturate it some. Maybe I want to take some of the color out of this. So to do that, I would just type the white dot, which is kind of going to make it not black and white, but it's certainly going to remove a lot of the color out of this. Still, I still see the red wagon, but more importantly, it's desaturated a lot of the other color out of this video to make it look real, to make it look like it was back in those days where we would have seen a horse driven carriage. So that once I'm happy with that particular look, then all I have to do is tap next and then that will allow me to save it to the library, save this look to the library, just like I did for everything else. So let's go ahead and do that. And of course I can name the look anything I want and I'm going to call it um, old school or old style. So now let's head over to Photoshop and let's see how this all works. So for example, um, I'm on the last library I used. Let's go ahead and switch over to the fall 2015 library. And in that library, we can see that Let's get out of that selection for a second, but we can see that we've got our fall colors, we've got our brush, we've got our pumpkin, we've got our looks. Now, when you're in the library, uh, again, thanks to Creative Sync, it put it all in there, but you may not be, you know, everything may not be accessible. So for example, while I can access the colors, the brush and the graphics, the look doesn't really apply to Photoshop. So it's grayed out. Whereas in Premiere Pro, that would be there, but the brush would be grayed out. So it just really depends on the application and what the application can do. So with that said, uh, for example, let's try some of this out. Let's uh, grab our paintbrush. There we go. So now let's go ahead and pick apply a color. We've got our brush. And again, we could paint with that color. And of course, we could paint with a different color. So we've got our um, we've got our brush and our colors in from, uh, we've got our colors in from Adobe Capture CC. Let's undo both of those. And now instead, let's use a different brush. Let's use this new scatter brush that we just selected. And let's go ahead and paint with our new effect. So again, just like any other brush in Photoshop, that gives us our nice scatter pattern. But also like any other brush in Photoshop, I can increase the brush size. So I can crank that up a little bit. And now when I paint with it, I get those. So I made it really big. So let's undo that. Let's make it a little smaller here. Still huge brushes. Okay, there we are. Now my preview's caught up with me. There we go. We can see it right there. One more time, undo. And now we have those brushes. But again, it was cool that I did have the large size if I need it. So for example, maybe I only need to do a couple of those and kind of create a design based on these brushes. Okay. 
and scattering them at different sizes and of course you can control this from your keyboard as well and kind of end up with some cool patterns based on your use of your brush so with that said let's uh switch tools here and even if i want the pumpkin in again it's probably better suited to bring it into illustrator uh, that way you can continue to work on the vectors but if i want to bring in the pumpkin as an object here in uh, photoshop i am of course free to do that and size it and scale it and it's vector so it can scale up nice and big in photoshop or nice and small then i can commit to it and i can of course start working with that vector object here in uh, photoshop cc so that covers our our colors our brush our shape but what about the look well again like i said the look is better suited for an application like premiere pro so that if, if i head over to premiere pro head over to the new libraries panel in premiere i've got the ability to switch to that same library so i can go to my fall 2015 library and there's my old school old style uh look so you'll notice that i'm i already have a video on the timeline or in a sequence I can scrub through that video and kind of see uh, what that, you know, see tourists walking down Bourbon Street here in, um, in New Orleans. But more importantly, I can see that this one kind of still has a lot of color in it. Uh, but if I want to you apply my look to it, all I have to do is just drag that look over and apply it to that clip and wait a second or two and have it instantly update to kind of desaturate the look and feel of that video. So that is, and especially if we go down the street a little bit more, let's go down a little bit more. Yeah, we can really see it here on the bricks where it's taking a lot of that red out of the bricks, giving it that old style look that I saw in, um, in our uh, Capture CC app on iPhone or Android. So with that said, You've got now in your pocket, in your hand, the ability to capture colors, brushes, shapes, and looks all for free, all with one app that you download either from your app store or Google Play Store for your device. And thanks to the power of Creative Sync, everything you do in one, uh, or one platform or one device is automatically synced to the other. So my looks are here, my brushes, my colors, my shapes are all here when I get back to my desk to do my work. So with that said, go download right now Adobe Capture CC. Take care and we'll catch you on the next one.